And so over three years have passed since the day Genshin Impact came to being. And yes, there has been so many characters have been released, including the four star character. Upon all of them, there are those that have been in the top top tier place ever since the start of the game and haven't even budged. But that doesn't mean that we also have many, many other four star characters that are worth mentioning and should be built whenever you have them. And so that's exactly what I'll be going through in today's video. We'll be discussing specifically some of the best and basically a most built character on your account if you have them for they are basically being used in so many different top tier teams and also rivals that of other five star character who are in similar roles they are are we basically going through the characters as well as their best constellations so that you can plan out their pools if for example they appear on a banner do you note that guys is this is not a full guide video for each of the character of course as it will take forever it will only be me covering the most important points of each character so that you are aware of and we'll leave the full guides for specific different videos and so with that out of the way guys let us just dive right in First off, we have the self-proclaimed Princess in Devour Tolong. That's basically the first time I actually said the word, so I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Though I'm pretty sure most of us are aware how powerful Fischl is as a character. However, she is a must mention in this video since we are talking about some of the best 4-star characters. And yes, Fischl is definitely on top of that list other than, you know, the big 3 4-stars. For she's an absolutely amazing sub-DPS, fit into basically any teams that you can find because she is the best electro application as well as energy battery in the game with very high damage ceiling all due to us having a 100% uptime her a4 being one of the best talent in the game with consistent electro damage and no icd pair that up with official having her c6 turning her into an absolute electro machine gun not to mention in patch 4.0 she's been buffed even further with the golden troop RFX set which is absolutely insane and just take her to a whole different level she doesn't really have much of a downside guys the closest I would say is that Fischl is generally a single targeted character so within group situation she doesn't really have much access to group electro application but that doesn't really matter too much if you're able to take out enemy fast right as for Fischl's best constellation you should generally aim for her at c6 other constellation is okay quite minimal more damage and quality of life increase but c6 changes a very good character into a top tier character as you have more us uptime and even more off field damage and electro application from fischl the only thing you do need to know is that you want to weave in no more attack here and there as that is how you trigger her c6 next up we have our lovely assistance of albedo sucrose no doubt sucrose would be right after fischl because she has always been one of the best animo character out there there and she is still is to date. Sucrose is a character that centers around one stat and that is elemental mastery. Whether she drives reaction with her own elemental mastery or supplies EM buff to other characters, Sucrose ability shines best when you're in composition that is able to bring forth elemental application. Because yes, Sucrose is basically the only four star character that is able to give you a ton of EM buff to the team and still a pretty rare character to lift this much EM from her skill and kit other than I would say characters such as Nahida. She's a very good character to be a driver as well because she's a catalyst user therefore very easy for her to trigger VV Shred. She has pretty decent crowd control with her skills and her burst and also one of the cheapest characters to build guys because unless you want to see high damage number from Sucrose herself you absolutely do not need to build her in terms of talent in any way because the whole point of Sucrose is basically to give your team EM buff as well as cast her burst to potentially group enemy in CC situations as well as VV shreds. She's also basically one of the best animo battery out there as well because she can actually run you know sack fragment and give your team a lot of particle especially when you're running with an animo DPS and yes she's also able to hold on to TTDS as well which is basically one of the best support weapon in the game and that's really really good. Some of the downside you do need to know is pretty easy for her burst to be absorbing an element that 
is not the desired element that you want to infuse as well as the burst does have pretty high energy cost so yes you do want to keep track of her energy recharge if you want to have a constant burst uptime so sucrose best constellation would be first her c1 where she gains an extra e skill to give more sword opportunity as well as better energy regeneration pair that up with sap fragment and you're basically getting a 3e e skill charges c2 gives her burst two more seconds and that is a total of eight seconds which help with em buff duration as well as cc ability if we're relying on sucrose in group situations and c4 is pretty impactful if you have sucrose as a driver because now you have a lot more e skill uptime moving on we have the girl that basically never leave the sight of the arataki gang kuki shinobu she's a very decent electro healer with good electro application and damage potential but she shines the most after dendro was introduced as she is the best candidate at triggering hyper bloom consistently and also work really well in aggravate teams overall when it comes to dendro electro types reaction team guys kuki shinobu is the one we bring the most on top of all other electro characters even five stars she doesn't really have too much of a downside but something to note is that her grass ring does have limited aoe range so we'll have to be close to the enemies therefore kuki doesn't really goes that well with catalyst user as well as bow long range user and do note that she decreases her hp whenever you use her e skill and it only heals your active character so if you're not careful she can easily get knocked out in high level battle like the abyss some of her best constellation would be first her c2 where you get an additional three second for her e skill meaning now you have a hundred percent uptime which is pretty important plus it gives her more energy regen due to it having extra hits c6 is basically an honorable mention giving her more survivability and providing her up to 150 em when her health drops below 25 percent it's a bit of a long cooldown but since kuki does love having em this does give her a bit of a dps spikes next we have the quote unquote housemate of the kamisato clan toma and so why is he here on this list the thing that toma shines the most on is quite similar to kuki shinobu but now he's basically a character that works absolutely well in Bergian teams whenever we talk about Bergian teams we talk about toma because he's very good at triggering dendro core for Bergian. on top of that he's also having one of the best shield in the game as well in certain situations just right after zhongli and that's basically being the second best shield in the game one of the top reason for that is being he has shield sustainability and reset mechanic of his shield so basically if you're looking for a shield guys toma is an absolutely good character on that some of the downside that you have to take note of is that his burst does have pretty high energy cost guys and also a long cooldown durations therefore whenever building toma you do want to keep note of his energy recharge level and also he does have quite low talent multipliers because of course he's not you know xiangling who tell those top top dps character so it does decrease his damage potential quite a bit however that is as not as important because we're focusing on having toma to be the version trigger on our team which is the most important thing for toma's role but some of toma's best constellation we first have c4 while this is not really required for you to play him it does lower his energy requirement for around 25 percent this allows you to build toma a lot easier in terms of rfx and you're able to reinvest more of that into for example hp stats for a lot more shield support next is a c6 toma second best constellation or it does provide a nice buff for the on-field character which is pretty nice moving on we have our lovely yao yao well the reason why she's here is that she's an absolutely amazing dendro healer that have very very good dendro application for you well yes that's basically sum up everything she does and yes that is everything you need on a dendro healer probably the only thing missing is like you're not gonna have as much damage from her but other than that her healing capability absolutely fantastic therefore having yao yao as a dendro healer just makes it a lot easier for you to build a team around especially if you want dendro resonance which is really really important
important considering that we only have two dendro healer one is yao yao and the other is baizu and generally guys definitely yao yao is a lot better in terms of dendro application department so it's always technically a rivalry between yao yao and baizu some of the downside she does have is that she has pretty high energy cost for her burst so you may want to keep in mind in terms of her energy recharge whenever you're building her next is that she does have quite limited healing because her elemental skill does not heal all of your team and only the active member the only time she's able to heal your whole team is that she requires to be on field for around three to five seconds which gives you quite a long downtime window and considering yao yao isn't the damage dealer for your team that's a little bit of a dps loss that way some of her best consolation would first be her c1 grade gives you access to 50 percent dendro damage bonus a pretty rare buff in the game making her pair even better when you're running alongside with a dendro dps c6 would be an honorable mention this constellation greatly improves yao yao healing potential as well as her dendro applications next we have our lovely stunning librarian of monstat lisa oh were you surprised to see lisa on some of the top four star tier list right here well i would say indeed because lisa is just one of if not the most underrated character to date in genshin impact and so many of us are really much unaware of her power now guys if you really love an in-depth explanation of why lisa is such a good character be sure to check this video out after watching this video because i basically spend half of the video explaining and convincing you guys why lisa is such a good electro character but basically to sum it up one of the biggest reason is that she is somewhat competitive in the electro application department with fischl and you guys know that fischl is basically one of if not the top electro character in the game right now lisa being able to kind of rivals fischl is something to be questioned about now the reason for this is that fischl is more of a single targeted electro application character while lisa can apply this to group with her burst and it gets even better once lisa gets to c4 she also has one of the high scaling multiplier for e skill in the game so yes pair that up with her burst as well lisa is definitely capable of dealing very very good damage especially when she runs in you know like aggravate teams one more important thing is that she is the only character in genshin impact that gives you defense debuff purely just from her skills and kits other character in the game that has access to this are basically locked behind constellations and most of them are five star yet that is also very much limited in the game and it's only very few characters who access to this in other words lisa has access to one of the rarest and the best skill debuff in the game making her pretty much even more valuable some of the downside that lisa has is that she does have very high energy burst cost which is 80 so yes you do want to keep in check with her energy recharge and yes lisa is also a character that you want to pretty much invest in her quite a bit if you want to see her doing larger damage some of lisa best constellation would be first off her c2 which gives you resistance to interruption and that is a huge huge factor for lisa considering you will be having her standing on field holding down her e skill and so without her c2 you will be interrupted most of the time therefore it's pretty hard especially when you're dealing with group situation and that's more or less the reason why you're running lisa in your team most of the time c4 is arguably one of if not her best constellation it makes her elemental burst deal at maximum 2.5 more ish damage and greatly increase her electro application throughout her burst duration which is really really much appreciated especially when you're running her on aggravate's team as it gives a pleasant addition in consistencies for reaction teams so those i would say are basically some of the best four star character to build guys now there are actually some honorable mentions that i want to touch on and i'll be mentioning them here first off it's going to be lynette she's quite similar to sucrose in terms of her gameplay and she is pretty simple to play as well she mostly revolves around her burst uptime for a bit of crowd control for it actually taunts your enemy during all of its duration but what's also good is that she gives decent damage buff to the whole team as well and with vv shred that can add up pretty well now she can get overshadowed by sucrose as most of the team would love to have the amount of em that sucrose gives plus sucrose has access to ttds which is basically a 50 percent attack buff for your on field character the best constellations for lynette i would say that she doesn't entirely have that many impactful constellations her best one would basically be 
her C6 where she has access to Animo Infusion so she can be on field as the driver. Plus by C6 she does have somewhat decent damage increase for her too so she can also deal a bit of damage herself. Next up we have Kaya. He's basically the best crowd battery for Freeze team because of his A4 passive. Pretty much a straightforward kit guys where it revolves mostly around what his burst up time. Plus he doesn't require long on field time. So yes just basically swapping Kaya in, casting his E skill and his burst and you're done with. Not to mention he does have low energy requirement. So yes it is very comfy to use him. Something to note is that his elemental burst in which that is his most important skill has rather small radius. Leading to weak synergy with range unit especially catalyst and bow user. So that's something for you to note. Some of Kaya's best constellation will first be his C5 since it does give a huge buff to Kaya's burst which is basically his main damage source. Next one will be his C6. It not only grants raw damage increase but also improves Kaya's cryo application due to extra projectile revolving around the active character. It also additionally refund you 15 energy which helps with his energy recharge level even further. And then next we have our lovely Kale. Though pretty much competitive alongside with DMC if we are looking at a free to play dendro applier. But here's the thing with Kale is that she have been used to get through so many F2P teams in the best. A big reason would be that if you're building two teams that requires dendro application having only DMC is going to give trouble to your other teams. Though Kale also have her upside as well like she can be used in version or if you're running burning reactions she won't get interrupted like DMC burst exploding. Plus her burst has lower energy requirements of only 60 ER and lower cooldown as well of only 15 seconds that can be pretty much a competitive edge. However Kale herself is quite a character that is reliant on her constellation. For some of her best constellation being first her C2 where it allows Kale's team to have extra dendro application rather than its own damage for the sprout hits every 1.5 seconds so it original deals like 2 instances of damage however for her C2 now you can get at least 3 or sometimes 4 instances after obtaining this constellation. Next is her C5 for this boost in damage is genuinely worthwhile and is among her strongest constellation and yes you'll be getting other constellation for us as well before C5 so that is also good. And so guys those are basically the list of top top 4 star character that I would say it's very good for you to build if you do have them and watch out for trying to get higher constellation for them. I hope that the video have been very helpful to you. I know that there have been so many good good 4 star characters coming so if you do have any other honorable mentions feel free to leave it down in the comment section and I would love to have a discussion there. If you're new to the channel guys don't forget to subscribe as I post a lot of Genshin Impact video like this and as I have mentioned I've got a very dedicated in-depth Lisa guide for you. So if you want to have a look in depth into her true potential, check out my Lisa guide video right here. I really appreciate you guys sticking with me to this part of the video guys. And with that, I wish you a super day and I will catch you on my next video.